Hi everyone, in this video I'm going to show you something that I've got from eBay. In this case I have my Vector Network Analyzer, which I've made a video of it some time ago. And this one is the Log Periodic Antenna, basically used for the Spectrum Analyzer function to sweep across a wide band of frequencies. And this one is the DNA. But what I'm going to show you today is this little gadget here. This is a... Let me focus the camera. Okay, this is a matching pad, as you can see. Basically, what it does is it will convert the impedance from 75 ohms over here to 50 ohms. And that will allow me to hook up a HD TV antenna, or TV antenna here, which, as we all know, TV antennas are 75 ohms, so I will not be able to measure or tune 75 ohms antenna with this analyzer. So with this matching pad, I will be able to use the 50 ohm analyzer to measure the VSWR of 75 ohms antenna. I take out the analyzer and then hook up this one to it. As you can see, most DNA comes with the N-type female pod. And unfortunately, this is a cheap matching pad that I got from eBay. It is uh, about 29 USD. And the problem is it has the BNC female here. So you need to get one of this. BNC male to n-type male. This will allow you to convert the end port here to fit into the n-type port of the VNA. So let me do that now and screw it onto this converter. And basically now it could fit on the VNA. On this end is a BNC as well and I made this low loss cable which converts the BNC end over here to become a female PAL TV. So this is a female PAL TV socket and this will allow me to hook up any HDTV antenna to tune them and to measure them. Alright, now let me get a few readings and show you what this thing can do. For the readings, I'm going to measure the VSWR of 275 ohms antenna I have here. On the left, this is the stock antenna that comes with the set-top box, which is basically the receiver that receives DVB-T2 format digital video. And on the right, I have the DIY do-it-yourself. HDTV antenna. To make this antenna, you need a 300 ohms to 75 ohms volume. And basically, you also need the 18 AWG copper wires. This array of four elements are um, joined to the two leads of the volume over here, as you can see. If you want to make one of these, you could Google for it online and you'll be able to find a plan easily. Okay, here's the moment of truth. In this shot, you're looking at the VSWR of the first antenna, the stock antenna of the set-top box. The extreme left is 500 MHz and on the extreme right is 750 MHz. The center frequency of this antenna is tuned to 625 MHz. In the center part of the frequency range, VSWR is below 1.5. However, if you try to tune in to frequencies that are close to 700 MHz and those channels that are close to below 500 MHz, you're not going to get a very good signal because the VSWR is above 1.5. Now let's take a look at the VSWR reading of the DIY HDTV antenna. As you can see here, there are more than 8 dips across the same frequency range. What this means is that this antenna is tuned for the TV channels which frequencies 
are close to or coincide with the multiple dips that you see here in this curve. I think that's enough for the statistics. Let me use these antennas and show you the difference in their performance. Alright, this is the HDTV antenna that I've got and it's lying on the windowsill now. And it looks like I have signal here, everything looks okay. But if I stand here somewhere, and now the signal is gone. So if I move about in the living room and step to here, the signal should come back. Alright, I have disconnected this top antenna and instead I've hooked up the HD antenna which I've made and it's very near to the window not as near as the stock antenna here but it's pretty near and now I could walk around in the living room I can step from here to there and no signal loss perfect Alright, this sums up my mini review of the 75 ohms to 50 ohms impedance matching pad. I hope you enjoyed this video and thank you for watching.